We're looking today, as you can see, at composite figures. Now, I just want you to remember, you know I'm so much about words and like where they come from and what they mean. Composite just means anything that is made up of, comprised of more than one thing. If you put some things together, you're like, I've got more than one thing you put them together, you call that a Composite, for example, um, one of the most famous composite materials is something that you walk on pretty much every day here in Australia. When you get to school, when you're like walking out onto the playground, what kind of material do your feet touch? Does anyone know what it's called? Concrete. It's called concrete, right? But some of you may not realize concrete is not just one thing, it's made up of two particular parts. You know when uh, the big truck which spins, right? It comes along and it's, it's spinning because something inside it will set if it stays still. What's that thing inside it? Cement. Cement, very good. Uh, but cement by itself, uh, it's not as strong as if you mix it with something. You make it a composite with something. Now this is a word you probably haven't seen before um, and it can mean a whole bunch of different things. Often it's sand or maybe like some small pebbles and rocks and that kind of thing. As a general term we call that aggregate. I think it's a double G. Aggregate. Aggregate. Uh, no, that, that R is not supposed to be there. There we go. Aggregate, I can spell. So you put cement together. With aggregate, you get concrete, and that's a composite material. Now, when you have composite figures, we're not talking about mixing substances together. We're talking about mixing numbers. shapes, uh, which includes, of course, numbers that go with the shapes. There are two basic strategies. You've probably seen this before, so I'm going to go through it quite quickly. Two basic strategies for working out the areas, that's what we're mainly focusing on at the moment, of shapes like this. Okay? Either you can say, well, they're composite because you added things together. You can say, well, this is the addition of a bunch of shapes. Can we work out what each of the shapes is? And then just add them together. And that's not too hard, okay? But there is another way that's very similar. And this is something you can't do with materials, but you can do with shapes. What else might you do apart from addition, Merrick? Uh, you can like draw like, these fake lines, so you can actually predict how, how much is like the one looks Almost eight meters. <laughs> yep. Uh, no, the small. Part. Uh, wait, wait, this one? No, the other one. Wait, wait, this one? Yeah, that one. Ah, this one, yeah. If you draw like a small line there, yep. it's actually three meters. Yep. So you can work out how. Um, yeah, very good. Okay, we're going to do exactly that in one second, actually. I'm going to take Merrick's suggestion. But before I do that, I'm going to hit pause on it. What's the opposite of addition? It's subtraction, right? Now here's a cool thing you can do with shapes that you can't so much do with concrete. Um, you can think of this, any, almost any composite figure, as not just putting figures together, like adding them, but also starting with one big shape and then taking parts out of it. And I'm going to illustrate that with you right now, which is why I've got so many of these. Um, one last thing, these are the two basic strategies, but sometimes, based on the shape that you've got, um, you can combine these two as well. Sometimes you add and you subtract to make whatever shape that you happen to have. So, let's have a look at this guy. Now, Merrick gave us the suggestion of drawing this imaginary line. I think this was the one you were doing. Is that correct, Merrick? Yeah. Is that what you were referring to? Great. Now, what you can see is, we have divided this composite figure into two pieces. And what's great about both pieces is that they're both shapes that you know. What are they? They're, they're both rectangles, right? Fantastic. Now, this rectangle over here, you have its dimensions, don't you? What are the dimensions of this left-hand rectangle? Eight and five. Very good. So let's, let's call these guys, let's give them some names, right? So I'm just going to number them. You could call them A and B if you like, but I'm going to say area one. Because it's a rectangle, the eight and the five, what do I do with them? How do I combine them? Someone does, yeah, Jessica. Very good, I'm going to multiply eight, ooh, they're meters, aren't they, sorry. Eight meters by five meters, which gives me an area for of, we can all say it, right? 40 square meters, thank you very much. But that's just one part, so now I've got the other bit. Merrick, what am I gonna do next? draw two lines, like the one, under the one, I draw another line. Ah, okay, so I'm gonna come to that, right? You could draw another line, but it, do you see I sort of don't need to at this point? Like I've divided up a weird looking L-shaped thing into two nice shapes that I can already deal with. Okay, I'm gonna come to your other line in a minute. Um, can someone tell me how to do this one, Harry? The, uh, the bottom and the top would be five meters and then the side of three. Whoop, say that again. So the bottom and the top will be five, five. very good. Where did we get five from, by the way? How did you calculate that? Here. We calculated that using the top. 
Very good. Yeah, so Harry's exactly right, and Hyang's explained how. I'd love you to put on your diagram, not just that this is 5, it's actually 10 take away that 5. It's a difference, right? Does that make sense? Just so happens that 10 take away 5 is also equal to 5. Uh, now we've got that length, we can do the same thing that we did with the first area. And just say, well that's 5 times, oh, 5 meters times 3 meters, and we have its area now. So I would conclude this by saying, I now want to find out all of those together. I'll say the total area, and I'm just going to add them. Can you tell me what the total will be? In this case, 55 square meters. Thank you very much. Hooray! Okay. Now, I will just point out, for a simple shape like this, you probably don't necessarily need to have you know, names for the areas. You maybe don't have to go all through that working. You could, for example, start your first line as 8 times 5 plus 5 times 3, and then you'll get 55. You'll get the same answer. But the more complex your shape is, the more I'm going to encourage you to set it out like this. Name your shapes. Like describe them. Work them out independently, and then combine them at the end. Okay? Now, the reason why I asked you to draw, and I've drawn, more than one copy here, is that you can divide up this shape in other ways. Now, Merrick was suggesting putting a line, a horizontal one, underneath the one. So we would get something like this. Now, we don't need the working for this because we already know what the total area is, but I would love us to actually think about how we can still arrive at the same answer. Now, Mary, you've given us the suggestion for this one, so I'm going to hit pause on you there and wonder if someone else can contribute. Uh, so, here, you haven't said anything yet. Where could I go from here? Uh, so, it's the exact same thing as that one. Yes. Oh, it's a different line. So, it's, you calculate, so it's one and two, you can number. Okay, so I could number them. I could say this is one and this is two. I'm even going to not do that because I know we don't need the whole working here. Can we work out, can someone tell me what this bottom one is, the second area? It's 30. It's 30. So, I got that from 3 times 10, 30 square meters. And can someone tell me, we're missing a, um, we're missing a dimension for the... Top one, aren't we? What are we missing? Yeah, Louise, what do you say? Well, it's not A. Yeah, very it's, good. It's not the whole side. Yep, doesn't go all the way. Um, so we need to figure out what that is, yep. which would be 8 minus 3. Yep, so this is 8 minus 3. So that gives us 5. Sorry, my scale is not very good, obviously, but the measurements, the lengths that are on there tell me. So what is this actual area? 5 times 5. So which is 25 square meters. And of course, we can check that, and you still get your same 55. Three diagrams, because there's one last way to do it. Krishan, do you have your pen up just for thinking, or to suggest a way to do this? Just for thinking. OK, all right. Uh, so Henry, you just gave us that answer. So can someone else show us? Remember we said um, you can do this by addition. So we've so far added these two, and that's given us the same answer. How could I use subtraction here? Yeah. Maybe we could capture the answer by doing the area of the full square, yep. those dimensions, and then divide over, subtracting away that corner. Fantastic. So there's like a, an extra, in each case you can see, there's extra stuff that I've drawn in in red, but depending on where you draw it, if you draw it inside the shape, you're going to add up these areas. But if you draw these dots outside the shape like so, that missing corner, then we're going to subtract. Do you have a question or a thought? Just, just stretching. Like, okay, all right, before you do that, who are you looking for? Um, Rishan? Yep, yeah. can I see what he needs to do? Okay. Do you, do you know where his office is? Yeah, I know. Yeah, near the student window, yeah? Okay, thanks, mate. Thank you. Okay, so, um, before I ask Louise, is there anyone who hasn't said anything yet who'd be able to contribute a thought on this one over here? Jessica, you said something already. Someone who hasn't. I'm going to go at the back. Hater, we've got, you, you in fact don't have to do all that much working because to work out this guy here, this shape, which I'm going to shade in here, maybe you want to do the same. We've already done all the work in the previous diagrams to work out the dimensions of this. Can you read off the dimensions for me? What would the, um, what would the height of this guy be? Very good. We worked that out here. Um, and Tim, can you tell me what's the width here? Again, we've already worked this out, but can you show me what it is? Also five. So we've got a square up there. So this guy up here, this is going to be 25 square meters because it's five times five, right? But now if you look overall, the big shape, including this like extra corner, 
which lengths are we going to use to multiply together to get the big shape? Okay, Louise. 10 times 8. Very good. 10 times 8. These are the longest lengths. So this whole big thing, I'm just going to put it over here, is 80 square meters, right? But remember, we're doing this by subtraction, not by addition. So what am I going to do with 80 and 25? How about I come with Haley? You'll subtract 25. From yeah, fantastic. 80 take away 25. Does it give us the right answer? 55 still, that's reassuring. I, I've got the same shape every time, so no matter which way we go about it, we get the same area, okay? You guys know how, you guys know how I love um, that game where you take the digits of the date and I say, can you make 100? You know that, right? We're not gonna do that right now. But I, I love that idea so much because it requires a bit of creativity that I'm gonna base something on it that we're gonna do right now. Um, I want you to think about your first name. Your first name, just think about your first name. How you spell it, you're very familiar with it, okay? What I would like to do is to you, get you to take your first name and use composite figures to write out your first name and make a hundred square units. Now, you don't call me by my first name, you call me by this name. So I <laughs> took probably longer than I should have this morning to work out how to use composite figures to make an area of 100 square units using the letters, and I cheated a little bit by using some punctuation with my name. Now, I didn't just like eyeball it and said, I reckon that looks about 100. I had to do a fair bit of work. Here is me working out that this is 100 square units. You can see, just like we did before, um, sometimes I'm, I'm adding shapes together. Sometimes I'm subtracting shapes, and depending on how you want to do this, um, you can make it as simple or as complicated as you like. Um, I'll give you two, well, yeah, two tips. My first tip is, which is, you will see actually, um, I didn't do it very well, that's why I know to give you this tip. Um, work out how many letters there are in your name, right? And my suggestion to you is, the first thing is, divide 100 by that, so that all of your letters are going to be roughly the same area. Um, you can see I didn't do that, so when I got to the end I was like, oh no, my O's need to be very fat to take over that area, because I was like, uh-oh, I'm not going to reach 100, so that's why they're kind of, um, they look a bit like square donuts, okay? So that's, that's the first thing. Um, the second thing is, you know how to calculate the area of a bunch of different shapes. And I hope you can see, um, in the previous exercise, I think we looked at, what do we look at? Squares? What other shapes? Triangles. Uh, triangles, parallelograms, and rectangles. I think it was those four, okay? Now what I'd like you to do is, at a minimum, I'd like you to use all four of those shapes.